like, you don't have a dog and yeah. they were being nasty about they your dog. They said something really bad. Interesting. You're listening to the big drill. And we are live and recording on the big drill. Hello, I know everyone. Because the woman shouts in my ear Good. every time. Good. Um, we Welcome. are back. We are back to another episode. Welcome. Gazi it, and Will. It's been a while. It's No, it hasn't. Just we just we just we were just here a second ago. <laughs> um, True. We are doing two back to back. We back to back. Recorded two back to back today. And today's topic. Tell us, Will. So, welcome to the metaverse. We're getting spooky with the online world. Well, we're not getting spooky. Yeah, it's quite scary for some people. That's what I. Like, yeah, I can imagine it is scary. It's scary for me. Um, but also exciting. Well, for the people that aren't too clued up on it, please explain to them. Well, the firstly, oh wait, well, well, first. Firstly, I'm not that clued up on it. Okay. So I just want to set set the scene, if you will. This isn't a set the bar low. <laughs> set the bar very low about knowledge around the metaverse, because quite frankly, I know little. Uh, but it's it's more of an exploratory, you know, like when you just poke something to see how it responds poking the bear it's basically what i'm going to do to you and i just do nothing i'm just poking you now to see what kind of <laughs> no it's, it's going to be it's an exploratory uh thought-provoking drill you know we're not it's the knowledge and so for a we're start, not selling you anything we're not absolutely not selling you anything <laughs> I've just got a few, I've, I've listened to a few podcasts, which uh, Into the Metaverse, Bloomberg podcast, very interesting, very uh, informative and conceptually it has a question that leaves a lot to be, you know, kind of like explore. It's, it's not a, it's not a this is what it is. It, it's more of a like, well, you know, what could it be? And it's, it's, I would encourage anyone who is thinking about, you know, and, and wanting to know more, definitely go down that rabbit hole of mm-hmm. that podcast into the metaverse. Uh, it's It's been quite informative and eye-opening for me. And it's, it hasn't given me any definitive answers. It's just given me more questions. More questions. Yeah. They, they, so what do, you, what do you know about the metaverse? So you just, you didn't even give your definition. You my just... de- my definition. Yeah. Okay, right. So, well, my definition is it's an evolution of how people will interact with one another, mm-hmm. how people will consume products. Yeah. How people will learn. It's an evolution of time. Like what it becomes will not be pigeoned into some sort of uh, console or interface. It will be a, it will be a world, basically. Yeah. So the way I understand it is, it's going to be the world as it is today, but like an internet version, and that's like way down so this is like the next stage of the internet do you think of the internet evolving yeah this is its next evolution it's it's gone from charizard no it got this it's gone from charmander to charmillion and now it's like it's hitting charizard now it's like the big boy now sorry what's that i don't know what that is oh no you don't know pokemon okay it's like pikachu turning into raichu raichu turns into what betchu no raichu is just just there just just chilling max four okay that uh, that that's that's scary i don't know what that is but that's fine so it's basically you, you had like web web one web two and web three yes and what i from my understanding web one was very like your um so kind of like if you had if you had like pigeons that you still and you had to go and, and printing and letters and stuff like that basically the transition of information from one person to another uh, like newspaper stands and what have you 
how did you get information or libraries even for example yeah, to walk all the way to walk all the way uh, and you and now with the well then the introduction of what's the, that the, famous story will of the olympian of how olympics marathon, even started marathon and he had to travel all, all the way, way back across, 23 and he died after delivering the message is that how the story goes i don't know if he died or not but he wasn't very like well. he delivered the message i think he needed a rest and then he died time. no apparently i think the story is he dies well that's how it used to be then, then no more of that will. web one web one came into play web one web web one came into play and then that was more to do with like bringing all the information onto one protocol book that was developed so that you could obviously have access to that. Mm -hmm. And then web twos, the development of that was kind of like your social media based thing. So as soon as it become like a network for socializing, it was it, it evolved gaming. So now the, the web three protocol that is pushing into place is coming as like a more open more open sourced so instead of things being closed off things are becoming a lot more uh like in integrative and can like integrative and can like lock into one another and stuff what do you know about that i, I they're trying to make it I, I guess uh neutral so that companies don't own pieces of the internet so to speak and it will be like a world this is what i understand a world where you can literally live a life in it, but without actually going anywhere. So if you wanted to socialize, you can go to the comedy club online, make your avatar, whatever it is. But right now, the way it is, is you would have to do these different apps. So you'd have to download all these different apps. If you want to go to the comedy club or wherever, you'd have to get it. So if you want to play this game, you'd have to... I think they're trying to make it so that it's literally like one world. I'm, it's confusing to me. So I would so the way that I kind of I, I yeah I get I I kind of under, understand what you're saying there, like one world. So if you were to say, for example, if you're if you went into a shopping mall, yeah, obviously the shopping mall is uh, and contains various different shops you can go into but let's mm. say the shopping mall has like and, and this obviously is the case you know a cinema or a bowling alley or westfield westfield yeah, yeah um so they have those kind of amenities in there as well you can walk into the shopping mall as your avatar and you can head towards wherever you, you want to fancy go. going meet your friends there but you don't have to have a the the transition from one place to another as you and your avatar should be seamless and say for example <clears throat> excuse me so say for example now you have you have things that are closed off like facebook closes off all its inf like you can't move smoothly in and out of facebook as one identity mm. you have your facebook identity obviously instagram and facebook now being owned uh, by Facebook basically have that or Meta, obviously now. Meta they? now, yeah, they changed their name. Yeah, they changed their name. That was a great move. Um, but basically, that that you can still have the same identity on Instagram and Facebook, kind of like integrates it a little mm -hmm. bit. But you can't have the same in other in other places on other platforms. If they have that, you have your own identity. So, what you're what they're doing is building, or they're not building, but they're conceptualizing something which allows you to have you can go in as different avatars at different times mm. for different reasons you could go to a rock concert whereby you're like an avatar with loads of uh expressing yourself loads of like tattoos and piercings for example and then you could go to a sports event where you might go uh, dressed as uh, one of the players or something like that, you know, for example um so you can take on different identities for different reasons within the metaverse. How do you feel about that? Oh, yeah, oh that's what I was going to ask you. Um, I got there first, mate. So. I'm, I'm going to say it doesn't sound very appealing to me. <laughs> One, because like in our last episode, we talked about the interaction physically being with someone else. Uh, 
whether that's personal training or whatever, it's still quite an important thing for humans, in my opinion, to have. Sure. And that sounds like you are completely taking that away from. So, for example, me, I game a lot, which means I'm at home and I'm gaming and whatever. I'm streaming. Cool. Twitching. And sometimes I'm like, I just want to go to the gym just so I can be around other people. Okay, I, I'm going there to work out. There's an objective there as well. But it also, uh, it also hits home for the goal of just being around people. Might pop in, see you. I don't know if I'm going to see you, but I might see you. Say hello, have a quick chat. And if you do, I'll make your day, don't I? Exactly. And that's the same for other people. Don't know who I'm going to see. It's not planned. But it's just nice yeah. to have human beings around you that you can talk to, that's friendly and nice environment. This sounds like it completely takes that away. And if it does, cool. That means more space on planet Earth for me because everyone's just going to be stuck at home. No problem. You guys can do that. But stuff like sports, I really love a good football match. I really love playing a bit of table tennis. I don't think I'd enjoy those sports if they weren't done actually in the real world. Yeah. I think there's definitely like, uh, the, the, the thing that I think will, the question I've got rather, is how do you create atmosphere within a virtual environment that replicates the atmosphere of, like, no. of, a, of a rock concert or a sporting event? Yeah, how do you do that? I think you can get a nice atmosphere it just won't be the same it won't be the the one you're looking for i'm sure there will be an atmosphere because everyone's shouting screaming singing along and whatever because you can still hear each other yeah but i don't know will you be bumping into people well no you won't of course you won't how will you be bumping into maybe they in the front room? maybe they they no as in like they integrate it so that I don't know. You see, it's weird. It's weird. The heat, the smell, the noise. Maybe we reach a point they can do that. I don't know. But right now, having this big ass thing on your head for hours on end doesn't sound. I don't. It's not. That is one thing that it's not necessarily is that it's not necessarily right now. No, it's no, no. You can you can still like you can have your avatar on on like meetings and you can go into like meeting rooms and have your avatar. You're not, you don't need anything on your, but you need, you need something, you know, you don't need anything on your, on your body. So you'd have to use a computer, for example. Yeah. The interface would be, yeah. Yeah. So there's an, there's an interface level. But Right now that's, I guess that's not, that's where they're trying to push away from. They don't want you to use, they want you you to use your body and your actual and, body yeah, to yeah. do it right and so. this and there'd obviously be benefits from from doing that because you'd be more integrated into the experience right yeah well that yeah and that's where i'm just like i don't i mean i'm sure there'd be other things that like brilliant like i don't know you maybe there's a covid happens you know and you wanted to go visit a country i guess you can just do it I mean, there is, there, there is the, and there, see the world, how there is that alternative of, I think, you know, one thing that the pandemic probably has done is accelerate advancements in technology in this kind of domain far more rapidly than it would have done without it, mm-hmm. which is an interesting thought yeah. in the basis that we are now in a position where the metaverse is being spoken about uh, and is being kind of it's been around for 10 years yeah or the concept of it the attempt of bringing it to life has happened on multiple occasions but now it seems to have stuck and also not just stuck but gained traction Mm. and momentum towards uh, integration within society and it's 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 coming one thing you definitely cannot do is you cannot halt the flow of change okay you can't you can't do it 
you can try, but eventually you're going to get tired and end up just flowing downstream. Right? Mm -hmm. Imagine change as a river and it's flowing. Sometimes it flows faster. Sometimes you it flows with the current and you'll get there quicker. Or you go against the current, it might take you a little bit longer, but you'll still get to the same destination. What do you mean? In the river. So you can resist the change. You can't, you can't swim upstream. You get tired eventually. And then you just end up going but down. It would slow your. It would slow change that's down. What, you can I'm resist. You can I'm resist saying. change yes. Yes. as much as you want, but eventually. I got there in the end. Eventually, it will happen. Yeah, change is going. Change is inevitable. And, I think that it's probably been accelerated by definitely by the pandemic. My my major concern is people's mental well being, on. Yeah. Well, we already see what social media is doing to people's mental health. Um, not good when you're looking for uh, external validation, when um, you feel the need to have to impress people you don't know and stuff like that. I can only imagine that magnifies in the metaverse, but we will see. We don't know, but there is the risk. Of how is that going to be managed? What protocols can we put in place to protect people's vulnerability? Because I think that if someone, I was talking about this the other day with, with a friend of mine, if someone is in the metaverse and is going into the virtual world to experience a multitude of different things that they can't necessarily experience. It could be like a learning environment. I mean, there's going to be a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. for learning and development to come into the metaverse to host uh, workshops in the metaverse mm -hmm. where people can come in and they can really engage. And, and these can be uh, high quality. Uh, they can be a really, really good consumer experience yeah. in order for that person to come back into reality and go, fuck me, I've learned so much in that experience and that um, short, fairly short time frame at a cost effective mm -hmm. price. And now I can go and take that and apply that in the world that I live in outside of the metaverse, right? Mm -hmm. So there's positives like that. And, you know, if you want to go back to the real world. If you go, and if you go to concerts, if you, you know, that you might not necessarily get to, but I actually was listening about something. So just pin that thought process sure. there. but the artists now they only really get money through touring mm -hmm. and doing big like world stage tours which are arguably takes toll on their health which takes toll on the maybe artists music artists music, yeah, artists. music, music okay. artists so they don't necessarily get the opportunity whilst they're touring they might do like tour 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 have a break for a year mm -hmm. and they don't really have the opportunity necessarily to any to have a family or be able to uh, do other things within the you know they become very consumed by their art which is delivering but music. now they can just do it from home now they can do it and which not all uh, uh, not, not all the not all the time but they can obviously deliver an experience to many more people for a lot more cost effective price point yeah and they can bring fans of theirs together uh, in an environment albeit a virtual environment whereby they, you know you can meet other fans and stuff like that so arguably that's a that's a really positive thing among among other things like i mentioned the learning but one mm -hmm. thing that does concern me is if people use the metaverse for escapism mm -hmm. and what they're escaping is a life that they're living in the real world that is unfulfilled yeah um i don't know it reminded me like when I was watching these videos and stuff, it reminded me of the Black Mirror episode. I don't know if you've seen it. I've seen I've seen all the Black Mirror. Uh, it was I think it was the first time. one, the first ever episode. What was it? Ba baseline it for me. Um, like they're basically all stuck in their room, and everything they're doing everything virtually. Like uh, there was a talent show, and she went and performed. Yeah, yeah. On the talent show, yeah. and then the, the guy was like, "Show I know, it's, it credits. Is it credits?" And he was cycling on a bike. I can't remember. Yeah. And then you have to pay to do certain things and stuff like it. Re it yeah. Reminded me of that. And I was just like, because if you wanted to go to the concert of this artist, I'm sure they're going to charge you to have to get in. You're not just going to get in for free. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. So you're going to have to have money 
whether that's a metaverse currency or whatever. So now it's like, are you trying to make money in the real world or are you trying to make money? No. Or is it going to be together? Sorry, I knocked my mic. Um, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to stay. Well, out, there but... will there will be the. I think that what I've from what I've been uh, kind of having a understanding of is that the metaverse will have an, an economy which will probably be quite largely based on uh, gaming protocols mm. and the various like say for example skins or avatars or accessories that someone could have in the metaverse will basically become something that creates a cyclic economy to a certain degree giving you an example gucci actually ran a campaign there's been other campaigns run by other brands as well but we'll focus on this one because it's the one i was reading about and they actually sold a Gucci bag for $4,000. A virtual one. A virtual one. Mm. So this Gucci bag, and apparently, well, there's a couple of other things that they've done, but it didn't, it didn't look great. Uh, it was a bit budget, so to speak. But, but it I'm was, assuming it's like limited edition, like you can't... It's the only one. There you go. It was like the first one or one of the early ones. So this person has purchased it for four thousand dollars and now their avatar can Carries walk it. around with a gucci bag that no one else can no one else can yeah it's the only one so let me tell you a little story now what do you think of that though I'm, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna get back to you on that okay, um please I, do. I, I'll be I, here I, I do think it's ridiculous but I, I i know why now i know why so runescape do you remember runescape it still exists it's a game cool. you go walk around and you chop wood and you like get your um level up your strength like yeah yeah cutting whatever basically like a real-time strategy game no not real-time strategy game uh, because you just you're just grinding you're just grinding you just it's it's a rubbish game in my opinion i, I shouldn't have said that i'm gonna offend so many people because people loved it but anyway i'm just so sorry pe people offended. were people were addicted take to anywhere. it people were addicted to it when i was in secondary school and anyway there was an event that went on it was a christmas event okay and um for that event you got a Santa hat for free if you part partook in the Christmas event. A virtual Santa hat. Santa that you put on your little whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, cool. Yeah, I'll get that. Yeah. Okay. The event finishes. Yeah. Not everyone partook in it. There is now, and they never released the Santa hats again. Maybe they have since, but I'm talking about this part time period. The value of the Santa hats became the most expensive item in the game. <laughs> because you could no longer get the Santa hat anymore. Yeah, so scarcity. People, scarcity. People in the game were offering, is that in-game currency, but all their money, like there was a set price. There was a market, it's a marketplace in this yeah, game. Yeah, There's a yeah, marketplace. Yeah. The Santa hats became the most expensive and it did nothing. It didn't give you any, because there's items you could buy that would give you stats. Yeah, yeah, sure. Higher, like a Sand. sharper axe or something to chop more wood faster quicker uh yeah fishing what, whatever it was yeah. it gave you stats bigger rod that made you better at what you're doing yeah yeah bigger drill yeah um sharper. the hat did nothing it did nothing other than you just wore it on your head it just meant that you it was a sign that you had partook 10 years ago and you were a long-term player of the game and you had a hat it's not even that it was literally because if you had it and I didn't, I'm jealous. That's uh, literally what I can't get it. Yeah, you have it. I want it because it looks cool or whatever it is. It's ego. So it became the most expensive item, even though it did nothing. And the pure reason was is because no one could get it anymore. Yeah. That's what that Gucci bag sounds like. Well, yeah. And so that potentially that Gucci bag, if they if Gucci decide to never make that again, I don't think they will. It will. It costs four thousand dollars, but it will, it will it will go up as yeah. soon as as soon as like people start walking around the metaverse in their avatars with their Gucci bags. They see three people in the same bag, but then they see that person with one unique bag. Then they want that so that they can be unique. Yes, I think that the the way in which people go into this new concept 
will give them an opportunity to be someone and ex- be someone and express someone that they might not necessarily be able to be or express themselves as within the real world. My concern that sounds dangerous to me. It, well, of course it does. You're a cynic. My concern is that it could, for some people, uh, be quite negative on their mental health, as in it becomes highly addictive. Mm-hmm. And if it becomes highly addictive and they end up spending 50, 60, 70, 80% of their time within the metaverse, walking around buying Gucci bags and, and up-leveling and, and bowling with someone in Tanzania, then arguably... Nice people. Huh? They're nice people. I'm sure they are. Then arguably, are we really evolving as a human race or are we devolving as a human race from a humanistic point of view because obviously from a technological point of view that oh, is yeah. clearly an evolvement we're we're, we're <laughs> I don't, I, who knows how far we're going with that but yes it does seem like well you can even argue it's already happened right we've already devolved from that aspect as you know we see the kids today because that's how old we are now will you know the kids today the they're kids. not they're not out there playing in the parks like we used to or they're not out there. Uh, they're playing in virtual parks. Virtual parks or whatever. Like everyone's on that. They just want to get home or play games or they want to get home. And But you're a gamer. You are part of that movement. Yes. But growing up, I would also be playing football every day. I would also um, go on trips and go to Fort Park with my friends. Like I would physically still do things. Now, of course, did I game more than others? Yeah, sure. So other people did what I was doing at a greater scale, but now you can see that it's getting becoming less. That's why there's a lot of people that are better than so, you, isn't it? No, no one's better than me. Let's be honest. No, it's true. It's That's true. got a sting. I've, I've got, got, a I've got sting. some. There, there's some some beasts out there, but um, but now as you see the kids today, so it, it started off with watching TV with your parents or with your brothers and sisters. Now it's not even that. You're in your own room. And you're just playing on your iPad or whatever it is. Yeah. So it's already happening. So what's to say that it's not going to continue happening with this metaverse thing? That's what I'm saying. Like it, it, it's well, the ex- it's going to exponentially get, yeah, it's, get it's more like, intense, it's, right? Yeah, the projections say it's going to get worse and worse, and um, people are already linking that to mental health issues, and that's why that's it's, it's one of the causes because you're taking away those interactions with uh, not take that they're taking away from themselves the interactions with other humans, and it's having a negative effect on their mental health. Does that mean mental health continues to get worse and worse? Or, or does it give someone the opportunity to improve their mental health within the metaverse by socialising on a playing field that they feel comfortable and capable of socialising in? It can do. I mean, I'm, I'm, do. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sitting here um, trying to take it down. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to hear. I mean, there's no point of even trying to. I'm just here try, trying to make sense of it. It's going to happen. I think what's really important is that you have uh, the provisions in place to protect people's well-being, and I'm not entirely sure that that's necessarily been thought of. I think often what happens with um, development of technology is mm. they go headstrong in because from an entrepreneurial point of view make that money they're going to make money right so how can it like if i you... would say though the difference would be um i think social media and that side of when that first wave came in that no one really knew the implications sure there was predictions but now we have like well actually no this is what you can do so we can almost predict it like i said whereas before that it was just like this came out of nowhere we didn't know what it was going to do to people. Now we kind of got an idea. My 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 concern is that they basically have a um, okay. So let, let's 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 hypothetically say you're in the metaverse. You're walking around the metaverse as your avatar, mm-hmm. which has got your style. Your your um, we'll come back to where avatars are coming from in a, in a minute. But you're walking around there and you're passing people, walking past people, and people are like rating your your avatar mm-hmm. they're giving you points they're scoring or, or they're making comments on your avatar mm. um, which arguably will 
position yourself in such a way where you are being fed external validation yeah that kind of kudos um, by just walking around by just walking around mm -hmm. and uh, kind of people seeing you which is actually no real different to people you posting something or an image of you doing something mm -hmm. on instagram and you're getting either zero or likes 10 likes or Two hundred thousand likes. Okay, mm -hmm. so actually, you 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 use. There's a good chance that you're going to be um, now. Social media has started to get used to. Th uh, started to get things like sorted with regards to to a certain degree. There being ramifications for bullying on social media. Yeah. Things that you know, verifying your ID oh, like and placements yeah. and yeah and and also like they they took likes off and things like that to make more sense of a support structure for people's mental health that are mm -hmm. on that still want to engage on social media there has been accountability to the individual as well you know if you go and following a load of um if you if you go and follow a load of accounts that make you feel bad and make you feel lesser than who you are then you know you were in control of your feed to a certain degree mm -hmm. i.e., who you who you follow anyway mm -hmm. but my concern is that when the avatar is in the metaverse it becomes susceptible to uh, strategies that will try and push that person to you know your avatar is the new ferrari right so you're gonna what are you pulling up in out into the bowling alley are you pulling up in a ferrari or are you pulling up in some coming like up, coming out with that some, Gucci bag. some budget avatar that you've just managed to mm. scrap together or something you know and i think that there is this I idea of evolvement that will allow people to get benefit from that situation you know mm -hmm. like we've mentioned a couple of them learning and experiences and stuff like that you might not necessarily be able to have i just think it comes with a caution be aware yeah and it has and it has to be like, I, I i'm going to dig around more and find out what things what concepts and what ideas are being put forward for the provision of mental health within the metaverse so i think it's a great I, you know well, it needs to be looked into um especially because i just um i don't know if you've ever heard i'm sure you have will but uh, the term keyboard warrior oh yes yes keep the, those that those and that attack through and via keyboards be, and Timing. they do it knowing that they wouldn't do it if it was in person for yeah. example that sounds and that happens in gaming all the time of course i've had hot the i've had you've had some real abuse haven't you I've had some pretty bad ones. Yeah, like pretty bad ones. Like, like you know, racist abuse and. Uh, I've had that. Uh, I've had like just, like, like Call of Duty because they could hear my voice and somehow they would know I'm not like I'm ethnically or from not from England, uh, even though I was born I've here. No like, idea how I, I would. I don't know how they knew, even though I was speaking normally. But anyway, but uh, and there was stuff like people getting angry, so they would say ridiculous things like. I don't even know if I should say it. Well, don't then. It just insults about like family members and stuff. Family like, members, yeah, even my can... dog that I, that, that doesn't exist. You like, don't have a dog, and yeah, yeah they were being nasty about. They your said dog. something really bad. Interesting. Um, and so I expect that to happen within the metaverse. People being complete dicks. Yeah racists whatever it is sexism whatever it is because they might feel safer to do it there and hide their true identity well the, the thing in is in the real world the thing is now like the idea that like of email addresses connecting people and stuff like that is going to become defunct in the metaverse it will be avatars connecting people mm -hmm. and that, that avatar you know you might connect to them via um you know ways in expressing and communicating will probably come into fruition as it's developed and as, as, as concepts are brought together but ultimately you'll find that that will open a door of susceptibility people will be vulnerable mm -hmm. and and people will be susceptible to behaviors that would not be in line with with uh sociably acceptable or uh you know good humanistic approaches to behavior people will be dicks people will um that's just a worry of it being 
magnified because it is on the internet rather than it being well, yeah i mean i i, I like think some pretty bad stuff is i mean look, be ultimately ultimately you you get human you get hu- the positives and the negatives of human behavior and human mm-hmm. nature in anywhere whether True. it's in reality whether it's in uh, the football pitches yeah. whether it's uh, down at the pub or whether it's going to be in, in the metaverse you're going to get the negatives and positives of human behavior 100 but i think what worries me is that the almost like the provisions or the protocols that are in place needs to be more stringent on a virtual platform Mm -hmm. in the sense of like it's going to be harder so it's going to have to be things going to have to be slicker and quicker and and more responsive in order to be able to nip things like that in the bud because you know, you, the the idea that someone can go on there with whatever identity they like, mm-hmm. you've got to be able to track that person because if that person's going on there and creating chaos for people and hurting people and and being uh, you know bringing negativity that's basically destruct destroying people's well being, yeah. you need to be able to find that person and that person needs to be you know reprimanded and do, dealt do, with. Do they get dealt with virtually or do they get dealt with in the real world? And that's a great question. How do you how do you uh, do bring you someone to account? Their, do you kill their avatar? I mean, that is there going to be is there going to be laws against that avatar murder? And who I, controls I just, the avatar? I, I've just hit you with so there's going to be law enforcement in there. Maybe. Law enforcement within the metaverse. Well, there has to be right to a certain degree. You can't just have a if free it's a free world. Then yeah. One thing that I have found very interesting is. Um, is the idea of how and what avatars are going to be and where they're going to come from. NFTs, mm. that's where I think avatars are going to come from. I've seen the UFC talk about it. I've seen Francis Ngannou, who's the heavyweight champion in the UFC, talk about selling their NFTs. I've seen Mike Tyson doing it. Yeah. Tell me more. Well, I don't, I, I think that that's, I think it's going to have to come on. And I know, I know a couple of people that are a lot more knowledgeable mm-hmm. around uh that kind of scope and that kind of area um which i think will probably do a much better uh, analogy of it than i would but i'll give you my initial thoughts on on the idea that nfts are going to be avatars Mm -hmm. you know someone who is collecting nfts now i think is basically collecting avatars that will have and be able to uh, go into like multiple platforms in the metaverse. You know, you'll be able to go shopping for, as a bored ape from the bored ape yacht club. You know, that's again, a, that's a nice look. You'll be able to go bowling as uh, Goku. As, if there's an avatar, as there, if there's an NFT of Goku, you'll be able to go. And the idea of which ones you have and which ones you choose are actually based on various. Uh, attributes of skip rarity mm-hmm. so you know you might have a uh, sad eyes happy eyes you might have a smiley face you might have an angry face you might have this particular item of clothing hat glasses you might have a moustache you know and each of the specific that's on the face obviously you might have the body as well you know you can have like long legs sure. short legs uh, different types of clothing waistcoat no waistcoat whatever but ultimately you could have a uh, com- compilation of attributes which equal rarity and scarcity. And I think that what we're seeing at the moment is people building avatars and then people buying avatars based on uh, like setting themselves up to go into the metaverse with these avatars that when people uh, want that one, like you said, because like that's only that's a rare one you mm-hmm. know not many people have that or you can't get that anymore it's a one of a kind then that will start to stimulate uh, an economy yeah. whereby people will be transferring exchanging the the currencies that exist within the metaverse so i'm just thinking randomly if, if the creators of dragon ball z wanted to create the nfts they've got the rights to their characters right so they just do a goku they do a vegeta whatever and then they're going to become super expensive because they're so popular and everyone wants to look like them. Is that how it would work? Well, I mean, 
I'm assuming that there is going to be trade trademarks and and like yeah. allowances. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, originality and a lot of creativity. Yeah, but what if there was only one Goku NFT? Surely there would be. But a it's going to be worth yeah, it's, demand for that. Yeah. Just thinking. But I don't know if I don't know from a legality point of view if that would work. If if someone could go and make their own version of oh, Goku see. that it, or that looks like or. You know, got to track them down. Copyright right there. Well, yeah, I mean, the avatar. But ultimately, that and, and everything is going to be matched to its unique blockchain mm -hmm. uh, identification, which is built on the Ethereum network. I've actually got a bombshell to drop. Well, uh, I'm going to drop it now. Please drop. I have a, uh, I've, I've got a friend who I've known for many years through university uh, and, and into my you know, 30s. He lives in America, okay. uh, but he is a big advocator of Bitcoin. Okay. And hand on heart, he knows a shit ton about it. Okay. He's read a lot. He's, I get sent podcasts all the time. Some I listen to, some I don't hear. He, I infuriate him because I ask him the question. He goes, have you listened to the podcast, Will? <laughs> Just give me a summary. And I'm, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I don't have time. Just give me a summary. But I actually, to be fair, have started uh, over the last um, few months, started listening to a lot more um, around that. And, and I think that, that the metaverse evolution from uh, a decentralized and open source of, you know, uh, open source protocol actually is, and, and is mirrored by the way in which financial, uh, evolution is occurring with regards to the sense of uh, decentralized financial systems which are going to look very different in the next five to ten years which uh, he's he knows a lot more and, and I, i've actually uh, got him to agree okay. to do a cross-continental big drill across uh, from the from the us of a Okay. So we're going to have to sort out a time and he's going to come on and we're going to you know, talk Bitcoin. Sounds good to me. I know very little, but this would be very interesting. And what he wants you to do, and obviously listeners as well, is write, ask some questions. If you say fire some questions away, he's going to, he, I'm going to send them to him. You know, he wants a little bit of prep around what kind of questions you might have, I might have. Okay. And, uh, and we're going to like, we're going to talk a little bit about Bitcoin and we're going to talk about it from, you're obviously from a very new uh, you know, don't know. I know some, and sometimes a little knowledge is more dangerous than none. Or, or true, and very but, true. But he knows an awful lot, so it'll be a spectrum of, of of knowledge to be discussed within that particular podcast. I'm excited to do that. Okay. Um, but so, where have we got to with the metaverse? Are you are you for it? Are you against it? I'm not going to say I'm against it, um, because I have I have my I do have my um, doubts. On some areas of it, I do think overall it'll be a good idea. Um, but just like with many things, humans kind of mess things up, and I just hope that it is controlled in a in a good way. But I'm not against it; I'm for it. You so, will. Well, if I'm being honest, I think that it's something that is inevitable. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that is progression that can't be halted mm -hmm. and maybe it shouldn't be halted maybe it should be embraced i would say i'm for it and i'm for it for the reason that it allows for exploration of what humans can do mm -hmm. and where they can go and where they can take things but as always I hope that when we think about what we do when we go into the metaverse, isn't solely driven by people selling consumerism, you know, creating, we've got the real world consumerism, well, now we're creating uh, a, a, a capitalist, a virtual capitalist yeah. society, as well as a real capitalist society where we're just going to, you know, uh, kind of milk the human being for the finances and the energy that they that they can basically uh, put into this virtual world i hope that as it goes forward there is going to be 
provisions for people's well-being, their mental health well-being uh, within that that environment, within the concept of, of that world. Um, I don't think that social media got it right. I think they were reactive rather than being proactive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were reactive in a sense that left many people in a very poor mental well-being states based on their negligible um attention that they, they you know there was there was a negligible level of attention put towards people's well-being it was more towards uh the fight the financial gain and the revenue so i'm for it but and and I, and I want it to be successful i think it will be successful i just i just have to ask the question at what cost mm-hmm. if if things aren't put in place um and that's really all i've got to say about that amazing guys please let us know what you think about the metaverse uh, if you're for it or against it um we would love to hear from you guys and um let us know will where can they find you on the virtual world uh web web two on instagram <laughs> on instagram is uh, at will hawkins coaching facebook will hawkins oh lovely and me gazi.92 on instagram and if you want to catch me gaming and raging Twitch dot TV forward slash J A N O O O three O I three O's Janubi because two wasn't enough, two was not available. <laughs> um, all right, but if any, if just is if anyone has any any thoughts, I think we're going to probably take the metaverse into a further podcast. So, we'll what would you like to hear about the metaverse? Yes. What would you like to hear about it? Uh, is, is a question and uh. We'll catch you guys next time. Until next time, this has been The Big Drill. Thank you, guys. Take care. Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Gazi. And thanks for tuning in to The Big Drill. You can also find us on these platforms here. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can find him on Insta. Gazi.92. And me, Will Hawkins Coaching. The links are in the description. And until the next time we drill deep, Goodbye. Bye.